Okay, guys. Um, as far as injuries are concerned, Charles Woods will be out, KT Leviston will be out, and then Rob will be doubtful. Uh, was there a setback for Rob at all? Or? No, he just hasn't made the progress. That I would say any setback is just, you know, he got that ankle pretty good. So. What has he been able to do at this point? He's practiced. You know, I mean, he's practiced this week in a limited capacity, and he's been able to, you know, he looks good, but, um, you know, is he quite ready to be the Rob that we're all accustomed to seeing? You know, that's why he's listed as doubtful right now. Yeah, it was just a little stomach bug. Yeah. He's been, oh, sorry, what's he doing? He's been, like, remarkably durable for, for you guys. Um, Talking about Kevin? Kevin Dawson, yeah. yeah. What has it been like? There's so many moving parts, I but know. knowing that that guy is. It's been great. There. You know, it's been really good, Jordan. I mean, and he has been, and that really goes throughout training camp, um, off season, into the practices, and then, you know, obviously in the season. So. Um, you know, I don't know if you saw his mic'd up last week, but I mean, it gives you some good insight into how much the guys like him, how much fun that he has. It's getting better. I thought he played really well last week. Um, and, you know, repetition is the mother of learning. The more that you're able to play, and I think he's getting a comfortable rapport. I mean, he's played with a bunch of different guys next to him at the right tackle, played next to a couple different centers, but it has been nice to be able to have, uh, you know, Kevin as consistent as he's been. Sean, do you think for I was going to say after the game, said you decided not to kick because you didn't have confidence in the operation. At during the, the game. During the game. Yeah. What, why not? It was, and, and is that, he, do you feel better now going I do. This yeah, way? here's what I told you. know, And I told this to Josh, too. I mean, kickers have you know some moments, uh, and, and it's not exclusively to him. You know, It was really the operation, and we missed a 26-yarder. I had a couple ones where we were just inside the you know left upright that were still good for us. Um, and at, in that moment, you know, there are some wins in Foxborough and just felt like you're playing your percentages. And, you know, my job is to make decisions that I feel like give us the highest percentage to come away with that result. Mm -hmm. That didn't mean that I didn't, that I don't have confidence in him. I mean, it, he was a week removed from, if it wasn't for a false start, being six for six on field goals. And so what I do know is, is that he's a resilient guy. He's mentally tough. He's got a process. I think he's learning a lot in the midst of his rookie season, as I would imagine most of these kickers will tell you. Um, but I have tremendous confidence in you know, his ability to learn from it, and that's not going to affect decisions as it relates to going into this game. Sean, with where the division race is, do you have any specific messaging that you deliver to your team every week with where you guys stand? No, you know, and you know, Lindsay, I mean, we focus on ourselves because really our, our conversation, we can't control those other games. Only thing we can control is how we play on Sunday night against the Eagles. And so if you want to be relevant in those conversations, usually what's served us well is just continue to take care of our business. And so um, now when you're watching the, the highlights or the scores, do you pay a little bit closer attention? Yeah, of course. I think that's human nature. But as far as what we talk about in here, um, none of that really affects the bottom line for us. And so I don't really discuss that. Now I'm sure guys talk about it, things like that. But we don't talk about that with the team. <laughs> no, he didn't. Okay. He was being, I think he was being sincere. He was messing with you. You think? So, you'd have to give me the context. I don't know. I think so. I, I, mean, I asked him like the same question about yeah. being in the in the division and if he kind of scoreboard watches it all. And he's like, I just kind of like guys told me this recently. I was Isn't that beautiful? Yes. See, that's why, you know what? Be like Puka. You know, just focus <laughs> on what you can control and... Hey, if that's the case, I love them <laughs> unconditionally. But no, you know what though? Like, but, but but there is a beauty in in that. In all seriousness, like, let's just say that's the case. Okay, really, I know this. That guy is going to show up when we play the Niners, the Cardinals, and the Seahawks. And shoot, if he thinks that we're in the same division as the Eagles, then let's show up against <laughs> them too. And, uh, sorry, to be throwing off at all if I did there. No, you... uh, I threw myself off. Uh, prime time games. What do you spend the day? You know, I like the Sunday night games a little better because there's at least football on. The Monday night ones are the worst. And Thursday nights, you're usually in such a cram that you're kind of using all that time up till kickoff. So um, you kind of sit around and watch games. But, you know, you go over to the stadium at a, at a decent time. But I watch watch games in the morning, stuff like that. Are you, that. Like, pacing around? Are you sitting around? What would you guess? Pacing around? Yeah, probably that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and then, um, since I always bring sunshine with me, uh, as we were ready last time, uh, 2018, yeah. This is Vic, Vic Fangio. Yep. Like, what did you come out of that experience learning about yourself, your team, your offense? Well, I think more than anything, you learned that that was a really humbling night. They did a great job. And, um, you know, I think very similar to what I talked about that year in the Super Bowl, 
I'm not afraid to admit, you know, there was things that I didn't do a good enough job of putting our players in spots. You know, give the players, you know, for the opposing teams a, a ton of credit, but I thought Vic and his coaching staff put together an outstanding game plan, regulated a lot of the things that we were doing at the time, and it, and it forces a lot of reflection. And so, um, you know, that was a good learning experience for me. And, you know, you try to apply those things, whether you win or lose. And there's been a lot of instances where teams have tried to replicate similar things to you know what was on display that night. But uh, what I have a lot of respect for with Coach Fangio is that you know he's got an adaptability, a flexibility, and an identity that is you know whatever suits that game, that game plan, or that team that he's on. And um, but it was a, a you always bring the sunshine. It was a great great <laughs> night for us. No, that was it was a good learning op though, but very humbling. Coming in high school, it's great. You know, you yeah. Back and you were able to grow up. No question. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't feel fun in the moment, but the only real growth occurs when you go through those challenging things if you're able to use it for the right reasons. And I think in a lot of instances, we've been able to do that. Um, a couple more, yeah. Sarah, uh, when you were asked about Jimmy G last week, you mentioned um, Joel Kinkowski. Is it always your backup quarterback, or how do you decide? It is, yeah, that's typically how we do it. And has there been anything that you've seen from him, either in the lead up to a specific game, that you mentioned that you thought you made your defense better? Is there any? I just think it's the ability for him to be able to activate the parts of the field, make quick decisions, you know, give legit, you know, he's got such a command too. I mean, some guy, sometimes you get some of these younger quarterbacks, they're not, you know, quite as comfortable taking command of the huddle. Even if you just hear the way that he communicates with the guys around him, you know, you can't help but get better because our defense has seen a look that's very much reflective of uh, high level starting caliber quarterback play with the things that he can do. And so, um, I, he's just he's, he's got a great way about himself and he has definitely made them better by the way that he handles himself on the field the looks that he's able to present them in terms of just mimicking and emulating the opposing team's quarterback um, and then I think he's also made the players that he's around better the way he communicates to them I don't think it's by mistake that when you talk to teammates of his at other stops he's been at um, he's very well regarded and and uh, and they want to play hard for him Sean we don't need much to get you going uh, to discuss football or Knowing that you guys are playing on Sunday night, is there anything exceptional about playing on Sunday night? Well, I think it's an opportunity. I think guys get excited. It's prime time. It's the only game on. Um, you know, you get around, you get a chance to watch some football during the day. But the players are better equipped to answer that than me. You know, I know that uh, our focus is on trying to make as good of decisions as we possibly can. And uh, I'm always a proponent for kicking off as early as possible. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Last one, yeah. Two part question, if you don't mind me sure. sneaking an extra one in there. Um, the uh, Bo, Bo Limmer was, was talking about how um, Matthew Stafford got after him a little bit in, in a couple of those snaps in practice, yeah. but he was smiling when he said it. Like He, he loved getting coached like that mm -hmm. by Matthew. Have you seen Matthew kind of turn that on and maybe pull it back in some cases depending on who the, who the young player is? I think he's got a good feel, Jordan, because he knows that, hey, these are the guys that you know are we're going to be you know in the game with, and it's very important. And if somebody's not giving that immediate feedback and nobody has a better feel for where he wants that ball based on the location and and there's a, there's an edge that he has that I think is good at the right times. I mean, he's got such great emotional intelligence in terms of how to positively push his teammates. Bo's a guy that can take hard coaching too, you know, and I think once you get to know people a little bit more, you know, your job is to be able to reach them and figure out what's the best way to inspire learning or inspire positive change if we're trying to correct stuff. And I think Matthew has a really good grasp of uh, where to pick and choose his spots uh, with guys like Bo and, and just in general. And I know the scouts have refined their personality assessment process in identifying guys who do want to be coached really hard, who can take that and, sure. and um, thrive with it over the last two years in particular. But from a coaching perspective, how do you see that? What qualities do you notice when that when you, you see a guy has that? I think it's some mental toughness. You know, I think it's resilience. I think people that can take hard coaching understand where it comes from. I think you have to be secure to take hard coaching. Um, you know, and I think you want to be, and if you're intrinsically motivated, you know, I've, I've heard, you know, coaches say before, I think Coach Saban said it, you know, the best, they demand to be coached. Um, and that's what you want. Those are the types of guys, the way that you're wired. Um, we can all be sensitive at times, but you got to be able to, you know, drop your feelings and understand that if it's coming from the right place, then usually it's received the right way. And that's why the culture, I think the timing, the tone, you know, making sure that it's never disrespectful or demeaning, you know, but demanding, you're damn right we want it to be that way. And um, I don't think you can have enough people like that because people that aren't willing to be coached, they, you know, they, they're gonna, they, they have a ceiling, and usually it's gonna be short-lived in this league. It's too hard. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks, guys.